The more I study religions, the more I am convinced that man has never worshipped anything but himself. Sir Richard Francis Burton was a captain in the East India Company, which was the biggest trading company at the time and spanned the globe and had major influence across the world. Burton was a man of many talents. Not only was he reportedly able to speak up to 29 languages, but he was also an excellent swordsman, which came in handy as he was a competitive fencer and also a soldier who was sent to explore locations such as Africa and India, as well as many others. His thirst for exploration also led to many very interesting stories which we believe justify his position as a hero of the British Empire. Now Burton was the first Westerner, reportedly, to complete the Hajj, and he had to do it in disguise because um, of how dangerous it was back then because it actually carried the price of execution if you were caught doing it. So that's obviously a very good reason to try and disguise yourself, but as you can see in the images, it may not have been quite so difficult as he did have the facial hair for it already. And obviously, well, I suppose these are black and white images, but from what we've read, he was a very tanned man due to his exploration, which may have helped in this disguise. Yeah, absolutely. So the thing is as well, to be the first Westerner is quite an impressive feat, really. Especially back then. Back then as well. Although, we're going to throw it out there that potentially it would maybe be more difficult now. Definitely, certainly more dangerous I'd, now, yeah. I'd, I assume it's got to be more dangerous now. It's got to be more dangerous. I mean, that, that path to Mecca, I mean, visas, that probably wasn't an issue back then. No. You've no. got to throw that in, into the mix, you Disguises know. Disguises will be thrown right off because they know exactly who you are. I exactly, suppose. that's it, yeah. Can, oh, can, I, can, I, can I see your ID, sir? Oh, so you're not. <laughs> Who you claim to be, in fact, <laughs> you are in fact Richard Francis Burton of the United Kingdom. So okay. you're not welcome here. And then execution was literally, it was capital punishment for well, that. it was the old I shit. don't know whether that was the, the government, the law, or whether that was just, <laughs> just if they found out you were just killed on the spot. I don't just know. mob justice, the <laughs> yeah. old short back and side. He had to do that presumably on foot, or travelling by some kind of beast, camel, horse, you know. Or on a cart or something, and I'm in, assuming. And in disguise. I'd love to and see the disguise. disguise. I, yeah, that's the thing. I wonder if there's... But is the disguise just wearing a full face mask and pretending you're a woman? He might have missed a trick. Because that is a very good way. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, on to the next bit. The man was an author in his own right. Not only did he write his own books, but he translated a lot of Eastern erotica, including the Kama Sutra, which I'm sure you've heard of. Although his own books were mainly about his own experiences and travelling, what have you. But back on to the, the, the Kama Sutra, I wonder with translating it, do you think he ever maybe, do you think he put something in there of his own? Because no one's, in, 18, in the, 18, the late 1800s, no one's going to know if he's put something in. Like he put an also, you know, uh, the person who mastered this sex technique was Sir Richard Francis Burton. Do you know what <laughs> he, I mean? possi Just, he possibly dabbled, he possibly dabbled. He may, he may have uh, emphasised. I wonder if he illustrated it too. <laughs> I d that's a good point. I do it doesn't say anywhere about him Just being, of him. being an artist. <laughs> yeah, they're all positions. based on him and possibly like the are, the celebrity pinup girl of the day, possibly, possibly the queen. We'll put some quotes on the screen now. Uh, you can see of what he said because he was quite a randy bastard, actually. Well, it, it would appear, as you can see here, the one about the penis and the hatchet. I mean, yeah, the, the, uh, yeah. God damn, that guy is a vivid imagination. I'll give him that. <laughs> Whilst on an expedition to find the source of the River Nile in Somaliland, modern day Somalia, Burton and his group were attacked by Somali warriors and he was stabbed through the cheek but managed to escape despite his injuries. Which left him with a scar across the side of his face, which is a really prominent scar which you can see in a lot of the portraits uh, of him. He actually made his escape with the weapon attached to his face, which is pretty insane really, because imagine trying to run away like in that much pain, let alone fucking tripping over what like a javelin, I think it was, yeah. Free dentistry, I suppose. But then again is Somali dentistry really all it's cracked up to be. It might not be anymore. I mean back then maybe. I don't don't know what the methods are, maybe would have had to see the witch doctor about that one, but, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> We laugh, but that's possibly like that, Probably, genuinely yeah. like It's what? fact. <laughs> Right, so we've uh, composed ourselves a little bit now, haven't we? We certainly have, yeah. So even though they were attacked by 200 warriors, and even though he was injured with a javelin through the cheek that came out the other side, they continued the mission. But 
Unfortunately, in the end, it was a bit of a failure as they didn't have the right equipment to survey it anymore, as it was lost, stolen, or just destroyed. Although he did record his findings and publish it into a book called The Journal of the Discovery of the Source of the Nile. So you can go and research that if that's your kind of thing. Right, so whilst we were researching this, this man, um, we came across a line that's just excellent, I think. It, now it says... And, and just imagine this as a newspaper quote. When an undercover investigation of a homosexual brothel went horribly wrong, he came back to Europe on sick leave. Now, it does not elaborate, which is, it annoys me. It's a crime, really. It Cause, does, yeah, because that that's, there's so much there that I will need to know. It's and got I me hooked. Possible outcomes or how this possibly went horribly wrong. So here's what we know. He survived the incident and he didn't like talking about it. He shied away from it. Now, these two factors, to me, are a clear indication that he may have been raped. Now, men nowadays wouldn't want to talk about something like that. So imagine back then, when everything was so... With men having to be men, do you know what I mean? With, before women were even equal, before anything like this. It would have been quite the difficult subject to bring up. It's not something you bring up at the dinner table. Absolutely not. But it does make him a hero. Maybe not getting <laughs> raped so much, but what does make him as a hero is that... He, well, I don't really know, actually. Well, put it this way. <laughs> <laughs> he was stabbed through the face twice for somewhat long and hard, and he walked away from both. This guy's made it onto our list of the heroes of the British Empire because he was just too much of an interesting guy to leave out of the list. And so if you have your own opinions on what went down in that brothel, be sure to leave a comment. Subscribe, and if you have any suggestions of who we could do a Heroes of the British Empire video on, be sure to leave that in the comment section as well. So, thank you for watching, and goodbye. In a bit, and see you next time.